So let's take a look at the uh, generic version for the node and singly linked list. The names are the same, but they can simply exist in different packages. So there'll be no name clashes. But what's really important to know is about the decoration for the class name. That's really, uh, that will actually highlight them about their differences from the non-generic uh, generic version syntactically. Right, let me first of all, just to emphasize, whenever we talk about generic classes, so that means we, as an implementer, you don't really have to commit. As an implementer, we leave the choice of element type, string, integer, accounts, or whatever type to whoever uses these classes for decorations. I'll illustrate to you exactly what I meant in just one moment. All right, so that's the uh, principle, all right? Let's now see syntactically what you have to do as an implementer, as a programmer. You can see when I declare the name of the class, at the same time, I also have to write the following syntax. You can see that's, that's the uh, less than symbol over here, and that's a greater than symbol over here, and then we give E over here, which is so-called generic parameter, right? Let me write down here, right? So when I say the no class for decoration, and then le uh, less than, and also greater than. Syn syntactically, you can put just a comma separated list of generic parameter. But in this case, we just need one. But well, later on, we're gonna see uh, some cases, for example, the map uh, class or hash table class, you will need two generic parameters. But for now, let's focus on just one. Like E over here, right? So the E here is the so-called generic parameter. Generic type parameter. Once you have declared this particular type, you can, within the scope of the same class, you can definitely refer to it. Okay, so now you can see E over here. Once you declare that to be, uh, you can think about this is decoration. Decoration of a generic parameter. Pretty much like how you declare parameter for your methods. Once you have done this, you can refer to it uh, within the scope of the same class. So let me just use a different color just to uh, emphasize really about referring to it. You can see over here for the type of the elements, we can simply refer to the E over here. And also for the node E over here, the E over here, the E over here, and the E over here, E over here, E over here, everything else. They all refer to this particular E that we have just declared, right? Let me just point to every one of them. Right? You can see all of them are simply referring to that, right? All of them, they're simply referring to it. Meaning that later on, if a user wants to use this node class over here, as soon as they insta uh, instantiate the E to be a known class, for example, string or integer, every occurrence of E over here will be instantiated accordingly into that particular type. Let me show you one example right away, right? I want you to consider two example over here. So one would be, if I say the node of string, this will be example number one. Example number two would be, let's say we got uh, the node of integer over here, right? So we got two examples over here. Okay? Let's see how we can distinguish between these two. And for these two, uh, for the first one, okay? If I say the node of string, basically I'm instantiating this E over here just by string. I'll just say S for short. Accordingly, every occurrence of E in the same class is going to be instantiated accordingly just by string. So that means the element is going to be of type string. And the next over here is going to be a node storing string. And also to really create a node, we need to pass a string object as the elements. And also the next node is going to be a node storing string. And also for the get elements method over here, we're going to return a string objects. 
for the set element over here, we need to pass a string object to set it, and also to get the next, and uh, it's gonna return a node storing string. And also for set next, we're gonna give a node storing string to be the uh, new next, right? You can see everything accordingly will be instantiated by string. That's something that's done by the compiler, so they will be able to tell. So whenever you're referring to M1, you can think about this is the version of the node that it is referring to. Everything should really work according to it. On the other hand, how do we understand yet another usage for this uh, the same node class over here? So here you can see we are giving a different type called integer, right? By the way, you should really uh, distinguish very well. These two classes are created by some implementer like you or me. And this part over here is about the usage for the code, right? So there are different contexts over here. So whenever you want to use it, you have to give uh, 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 like a known type, like a precise type for instantiation for the, for the E, right? So now we are re instantiating E by integer. So what does that mean? I'm going to annotate the same copy of code, right? You're going to think about conceptually. So now the node over here is going to be instantiated by I integer i will be integer pink one right so that means for this version of the uh link uh note the element type is going to be of type integer and also the next note is going to be a node storing integer and also if i want to create a new note of such kind the element should be i and also the next should be a node storing integer right i'm trying to i'm trying to put the string and integer side by side so so that you know they are there are two different versions of the node that's being created not by you but by the compiler behind the scene so you don't have to worry about duplicates compiler will take uh take, take care of them pretty well okay let me com uh, complete the illustration and for this uh version here if you want to say get elements it's going to actually return the elements of type integer and if you want to set an element you should really give uh some integer elements if you want to get a next node you should return a node story integer only and if you want to set the next node you should really pass an input node story integer right you can see everything will be uh, instantiated according to this integer type and if i want to use m1 versus m3 i have to use them consistently so what do i mean so let's now take a look at m1 and also m3 over here right for example in the case of m1 as soon as I declare the node of type string over here, now I can call the constructor over here, right? But for the constructor, there is some syntactic shorthand you can actually do. It will be okay if you simply, uh, you want to be consistent. Since I say uh, it will be no storing string over here, so here in this uh, syntax over here, either you can leave it empty, uh, like an angle brackets over here, in which case the compiler will figure out exactly what you really meant. It must be string over here on the other hand if you put empty uh brackets over here it must mean the integer accordingly the compiler can figure that out but if you want, really want to put it you can definitely put string inside you can put integer inside here as well you will see the example in later example well you'll see the example of these with the string versus integer put in in later example and what's really important for you to note is once we have this you can see here you got to be allen in this case and it, here it has to be some integer you can see the difference here this will be why does this have to be allen it's because once we have instantiated that to be a string now whenever we want to do something with it we must use a string type accordingly so specifically you can see this is the constructor that we are talking about in which case the element type over here should be string or integer depending on whether you're talking about n1 or n3 when you are talking about n1 you should be referring to the string version. When you're talking about N3 over here, you should be referring to the uh, integer version over here. Okay, so that's uh, something very important for you to see. Okay, and let me see if there's anything else. I think that's about it. And let's uh, try to look at some other method here. And if you, uh, some other uh, example, you can see here we say N1. And this will be okay because since we're talking about string version over here so that's why when you talk about the constructor over here the end here should be a no storing string the blue version so that's why the mark over here is fine and if i look at for example over here uh, let's say m4 over here you can see for m4 the e has been instantiated by integer 
So that means we are talking about this version over here with integer elements and also the no storing integer, right? So that's why you can actually pass over here N3, right? N3 is indeed an integer node, right? You want to see that consistency. And let's see why uh, something will be inconsistent. Let's say if I got this line over here, why would it not compile? This is not going to compile because here I got integer. Meaning that whenever I talk about N5, I should be referring to this version over here where it's integer elements and also no story integer, right? But now I'm passing integer value over here. I'm passing, uh, sorry, I'm passing string value over here. So that's incompatible, right? You can see this part over here is incompatible. It should be integer rather than just a string. Similarly, if you look at this line over here for another note, you will see that here we are passing a uh, sound valid element. However, we are passing the wrong note over here. You can see if I pass N2 over here, since we talk about EB instantiated by integer, again, we're talking about this version over here where the note should be story integer, the pink version. In that case, is N2 really a no story integer? No, N2 is actually a no storing string. So that's why that is not compatible. Right? So you can see, for example, over here, expecting a node of integer, but getting a node of string. Right? It's really important for you to see why these two lines somehow got compilation error, right? That's something you want to study for that, right? And of course, for this one here, it's a little bit messy over here, but I think it's still systematic. I'm just trying to show to you by having two different decorations over here, essentially the compiler will distinguish uh, distinguish between two versions of the node class. That's something uh, you will be as if the compiler was trying to create a duplicates, but you don't have to worry. It's not you as an implementer creating duplicates. So that's a good design for sure. Right, and it'll be very similar for you to also look at this part of the code as well, right? Let's take a look very quickly, okay? And I'm gonna do something similar as before, so you can see for list number one, I'm using uh, SLL just for referring to singly linked list over here, right? And I'm instantiating that to be string. So that means every occurrence of E is going to be replaced by string over here. So that'll be the version for list one whenever i talk about list number uh list one i'm really referring to this version of the singly linked list on the other hand if i try to do another singly linked list over here that's list number two that's actually instantiating the parameter e to be integer so for list number two whenever i refer to it i'm talking about another version where every occurrence of e is replaced by just integer over here Okay, let me just give you one example and then you can uh, think about the rest on your own. If I talk about list number one, I say list number one dot head. In that case, it's going to return a node storing string. If I say list number two dot head, it's going to return a node storing integer, that version over there, right? That's really the beauty about having generics. Let's look at some example over here quickly, shall we? So if I say list number one does set hat, right? So what would that expecting? So set hat will be over here. That's definitely expecting a string, a string uh, like a note of string. Is N2 a note of string? N2 is over here, which is a note of string. In that case, it will check. Very good, right? And similarly, if I say list one dot add at, in that case, you'll see uh, add at over here is really expecting the string over here for list number one. So that's why it will also be okay. If I look at the same uh, similar method call in for list number two, you can see here, if I say list number two dot set hat, the context object now is list number two, which instantiates E to be integer. So set hat, if I talk, uh, talk about the same method over here, it will be talking about this version, expecting a no story integer. The, uh, is N for a no story integer, indeed. M4 is story integer over here. So that's why this will check. What about list number two, add add? And then in that case, I'm passing 68. So add add over here 
is definitely talking about this version because we're talking about list number two being the context object. So that'll be the integer element version. So 68 over here is actually fine. All right. All right, very good. So you can definitely uh, continue with uh, these two examples. I'm going to leave them to you over here, right? You can, uh, let me just give you one example where it will not be correct, right? Just one example. Let's say I'm talking about list number two, okay? If I say list number two dot set head, and then I'm simply passing n one, would that be okay or not? It turns out it will be a compilation error because when I talk about list number two, right? Let's now just be logical here. If I say list number two, that means everything has been instantiated by I, including the set head over here which will be expecting a node storing integer. Is M1 a node storing integer? No, because M1 is here storing string. So that's why it's not compatible, right? So you really want to know how to uh, justify this, right? So what we're expecting over here, expecting a node of, I'll just say I just for short, but getting or receiving a note of I'll say S just for string, right? All right, it's a very detailed walkthrough just about how you can go over, you can really compare uh, the two different instantiation for the same note class over here, and also uh, like a two different instantiation over here for the same note class, and also two different instantiation for the same singly linked list class. It's really important for you to see, right? But as an implementer, all you define will be just these two cop uh, only these two classes. You don't need to create any duplicates. Any uh, alter uh, any instantiated version for the classes will only be managed by the compiler automatically. You don't need to worry. That's really the beauty for generics. All right, so that's about what I want to say to really compare the non-generic version versus the generic version. You want to study these uh, these two examples very carefully, and I will encourage you to really put it into Eclipse to really see why certain places will, will actually got compilation error, as I explained. All right, let's now move on to the next part.